Hey there everyone, this is Brayden here for gshelper.com and today I'm going to show you how to create a very basic word game using writable tables. Now I notice a lot of people still use a lot of game attributes to create word games, each attribute holding a text character value. But now that we have writable tables, there's really no need for all of those attributes. Now before we had writable tables, it could become really messy and hard to keep track of all your attributes but tables makes it uh, very easy and clean to both manage the content of the entered word uh, and easily create new puzzle answers. So let's go ahead and dive in. I've created a iPad landscape project. Uh, it doesn't matter which platform you want to build your demo on or import it into your game, uh, but I just chose iPad because it's larger and easier to follow for a demo. So I'm going to go into the Scenes tab and into the initial scene. Now you'll notice I have uh, a lot of art already imported into this project. You can go ahead and create your own tile art or your own letter art and import it into your project. But notice though that each image has a name relative and associated to the um, image. Uh, so for the A image, it's A.png. For B, it's B.png. Uh, I notice a lot of people do A letter PNG, B letter PNG, but there's no need to do that. Just put A PNG, B PNG, and so on. You'll notice that these are capitals. Uh, I would recommend that you do lowercase letters, but I just grabbed this from gshelper.com, so uh, we'll, we'll work around it. It's no problem if you do decide to put it in capital letters. Just know that you will need also a, a blank tile image with no letter on it. Uh, and I would recommend that you name it underscore blank like I have it right here. Uh, and that will come into play later on. So we're going to create three actors. We're going to name the first one tiles. Create another one. Name it letter. And the third and final one we're going to call the round rules. Okay, uh, before we get into any of the code, let's go ahead and create a couple tables. So hit the plus sign, and for the first one, we're going to name it typed table. And let's go in here, and we are going to create five columns. And because this is a word game, and we're, we're typing in letters, we need each of these columns to be a text attribute. So go ahead and do that. After you're done, back out and create another table. We're going to call this one answer table. And we only need one column and one row uh, for the simplicity of this demo. If you want more answers or more puzzles, you would create you know, two rows, three rows for three puzzles, or you can even do it in columns. It doesn't matter. Uh, but make sure that it is a text attribute. And because all of my letter images are capital, for the answer, I'm going to make sure to put it all in capital letters. So uh, for the simplicity, again, we're just going to do something really simple. So for the answer for the first puzzle, it's going to be A, B, C, D, E. And that's not even a real word. Uh, it's just a string of letters that we're going to use for this demo. So if you're using lowercase letters for your images, make sure that these are lowercase. That's very important. Go back home into the Scenes tab and into the Initial Scene. Let's go ahead and drag the underscore blank image on top of the tiles actor. When I release it, it both applies the image to the actor and resizes it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and up the width and height for this actor, so 100 by 100. Make sure that you actually create the art for whatever size you need, but for this demo, I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, kind of up the width and height. So, okay. Next, we need to go ahead and create one integer self attribute. And we're going to name this column. And uh, set this to 1. Now we're going to drag a constraint attribute from the behavior library into the logic stack. We're going to constrain self image to open the expression editor, table cell value table is going to be typed table and remember in this table we only have one row so put one for the row and for the column we're going to input our new self column attribute okay 
So because we're going to constrain the image of this actor to the content of each column of the table, we need to make sure that the initial content of that table is this actor's image. So underscore blank. If we didn't do that, let me just go ahead and show you. If I just drag this on and press preview, it just shows up as a white block. And that's because there's no content in the table and it's continually checking to see what the content is and then applying the image to that content. So what we're going to do is go into the tables and select our types table and put underscore blank because that's the name of the initial image. And I'm just going to paste that into each of the columns and now you'll notice that it correctly applies the image. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this because there's no need to have that on right now. Let's go ahead and create uh, a couple game attributes before we continue on. We're going to create an integer game attribute and call this letter count and set it to 1. Let's create another one, a text attribute and call it answer content. And just uh, leave that blank for now. Go ahead and drag the A image onto the letter actor. And let's keep the size at 64 by 64. Create a rule, and we're going to say when touch is pressed, click the behaviors tab in the library and drag in a change, attribute, uh, change table value behavior into the rule. Now, we're using writable tables, and what we want to do is when this actor is pressed, we want to write that letter to the table. Um, because we're going to be, when the player does that, they're, they're building a word, a string of letters to form a word. Um, so pretty much this actor is, is the key on your keyboard. You can think of it that way. So for the table, we need to select the typed table. Remember, we only have one row, so row one, column, open the expression editor and click game letter count so column is whatever the letter count attribute is currently uh, and for the value open the expression editor self image okay now I'll explain what this does in a minute uh, drag a change attribute behavior beneath this previous behavior and we're gonna change game letter count to game letter count plus one. So what this is going to do is apply a letter or write a letter to column one because that's what our game letter count attribute value is set to initially, so one. But when we press that, we need to make sure that we don't continue to uh, type letters into the same column because that, that just wouldn't work. We need to make sure that each letter is in its own column, and which is that's why we increase the letter count attribute after we've uh, writ written the um, image, the the content to the table. All right, so let's go ahead and back out of there. And in the round rules actor, I'm just going to go ahead and give it a quick color. And I always create a round rules actor, no matter what, if it's a demo or a full blown game. And I usually put all of my change scene behaviors in here, everything that controls the entire game, stuff that I use on a regular basis. That way I don't have to go through, you know, 100 actors looking for something I use a lot or scroll through a lot of code to find something. It's all in one place. It's just easier to find. So I'm going to go ahead and put a constraint attribute into the logic stack. And we're going to constrain game.answerContent and open the expression expression editor. This is going to be a large expression, but just bear with me. We're going to do table cell value. For table, we're going to do typed table, row one, column one. And then move your cursor uh, outside of the parentheses, the close bracket, and put two periods, so dot dot, and table cell value. Now you'll notice we can't see it in the expression editor, so just hit the right arrow key on your keyboard, and it'll show up. So table, typed table, row one, column two. So what we're doing is we're grabbing each character value in the table and applying it to this game attribute. And you'll see how that comes into play later on. So we've done columns uh, one and two, so let's do the rest. Dot, dot, 
table cell value, hit the right arrow key, table cell value, typed table for the table, row 1, column 3, dot dot, table cell value, right arrow key, typed table, row 1, column 4, and for the last one, table cell value, typed table, row 1, column 5. And there's no need to add the two periods at the end here. That's all we're going to do. All right, let's create a rule. And we're going to say when attribute game answer content, and because it's a text attribute, we have a couple options. We're going to select is. So when the content of this attribute is, open the expression editor, table cell value, table, answer table, row 1, column 1. Remember that we put the answer, A, B, C, D, E, in the answer table in row 1 and column 1. Now you can create, like I said, other levels or other puzzles. So you would just create an attribute to represent which column or row to plug into, and that should work. So pretty much we need to let the user know that they've successfully uh, cracked the puzzle or completed the level, found the hidden word. So what we're going to do... Uh, is say when the answer content or the content that is in the typed table that they typed in is the answer to the puzzle. For the simplicity of this demo, I'm just going to change the alpha of this actor to zero just to inform the player that they've successfully found the hidden word. Uh, you would put a button to pop up that says, you know, well done or continue on to the next level, level complete, something like that. But for the simplicity of this demo, we're just going to change this to uh, be invisible. So back on out there, and we're going to drag the round rules actor onto the scene, stretch it across. Now, for the sake of time, I'm not going to be really precise on this, but we need to drag five tile actors onto the scene. And I'm holding down shift and pressing the right arrow key about nine times. And then I'm going to drag another one on. All right, so we have our five on there. Now we know that each actor has a self attribute applied to it, the column attribute. And that attribute we plugged into the constrained behavior that grabs its image. So we know that the first one uh, is all set to go because that attribute is set to one. But we need to double click the second one and change the self column attribute to two. For the third one, three. Four, and finally five. Alright, we're almost done. We need to go ahead and drag on some letter actors and I'm not going to be precise about this. Just drag on five or six for the demo. You would drag on uh, all of the letters of the alphabet because um, you want to give them a good variety and you know not all words start with A, B, C, D, E. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and drag on the appropriate images to the actors and once that's done let's click preview so when we click the keyboard letters you'll notice that the word starts to form and when the word is A B C D E you'll notice that the round rules actor disappears, informing us that we did in fact complete the puzzle, we found the hidden word. Now if we don't do that correctly and put F E D C B, you'll notice that it doesn't disappear. We haven't found the correct word and that's why. Something else you can do is go into the round rules actor and drag in a display text behavior and display the Game dot answer content attribute and it'll show you what's currently in there so you'll notice it's underscore blank underscore blank and that's right because we need the images to to, to look like this but you'll notice how it kind of works and it overrides and overwrites the underscore blank and uh, 
and puts the letters there. So that's about it, guys. I hope you find this insightful and you're able to use it in your word games. Again, I don't want you to have to go through all the hassle of having, um, you know, a couple dozen game attributes for a word game that can easily be done with writable tables. And this would have been even easier. <coughs> excuse me. If we had uh, table to table comparisons, uh, where you can reference a table to a table, and then we wouldn't need the answer content attribute. We could just say when the typed table equals the answer table um, to show the level complete. And so I may update that when uh, table to table comparisons is updated to the stable build. They're currently in the nightly builds, and I'm uh, building a couple word games with it and so I've just you know been waiting for it to come to the stable build um, and so I'll, I may update this demo when that happens just to make it even easier so I hope you guys find this useful and we will see you in the next video